Greetings brethren, my name is Tuvia and I welcome you to today's Bible study. This Bible study holds every Tuesday uh, online via WhatsApp and you can also watch this um, particular video on from Bible study on YouTube. So I'll be posting it on YouTube. So um, please, if you, if you want to join us and I'd love you to join us, just um, spread the word, invite your friends. And um, just send us a comment, a message, and um, we'll send you the link. It's I'm doing it like this just to avoid some scammers, you know, some of those people that come and post rubbish. So um, I thank you so much. I'm grateful to God for today. And um, don't forget to keep sending your comments, anything that resonates, anything you can relate with, anything the Lord drops in your heart, any contribution, any advice. Please, as you watch this video, as you're participating in this Bible study, please do not forget to uh, drop your comments. I appreciate it a lot, and I, I read all of them. Thank you so, so much. Now, to the business of the day quickly. Um, I hope today's video is going to be a bit shorter. So let's bow our heads in prayer as um, we go in, into what the Lord wants us to to uh, hear today. Dear Heavenly Father, we bless you, your name. We give you all the praise. You are worthy, you are awesome, the great I am that I am. Blessed be um, your name for giving us opportunity to gather here again. Thank you, Abba Father, because where two or three are gathered, we are sure you are in our midst and you are going to send forth your word. And Lord, our prayer is that we do not live here the way we came, but we'll live better. Our souls will be more nourished by your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so today we're going to um, turn our Bibles to, let's turn our Bibles to, <clears throat> excuse me, let's turn our Bibles to Psalms uh, chapter 46 verse 10. So I hope you invited someone. And for all our brethren that just joined us, you are highly welcome. Uh, yes, so it's it's a matter of uh, uh, doubling yourself. Win a soul for the Lord. He is always happy about that. Thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate you and we love you with the love of the Lord. Okay, so Psalm 46 verse 10. And it says, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. <clears throat> so, um, I don't even, I can't remember what I was doing. And, you know, this scripture flashed in my mind. And it kept repeating and repeating. So, we will be looking at Psalm uh, 46 verse 10. And, um, I, yeah, it says, um, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. So this scripture just came into my um, memory or mind. And um, it was obvious that the Lord wanted us to look at this today. And so that's why we're looking at it. So um, we're going to look at this. Be still and know that I am God. Now, I'd love to divide it into three parts. <clears throat> the first part is be still. The second part is and know. And the third part is that I am God. Did you get it? Be still and know. The second part, that I am God is the third part. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, um... I went ahead to look for translation of still. Now, one thing you should know that when you want to do Bible study, you better get all your materials ready. Check it in whatever language you can to comprehend and understand what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Yes, the Holy Spirit is going to help you and going to help me when he sees that, um, or rather, he's going to help us through some of these materials. Uh, yes, unbelievable ways like dictionary. Sometimes you think you understand the English word, but we don't. 
And sometimes you think English word means one thing, but it means another thing in Hebrew or in Greek. And some of these things help us to comprehend what the Lord is trying to teach us. Um, I have to turn off. I have to turn off my internet because it's disturbing me. So please pardon me. Okay, so um, so that's what it means to do Bible studies, not just reading it. It's about doing research, intensive research by the help of the Holy Spirit, not by our might though. So um, I had to look up for, remember the first part is be still. Okay. I guess I I need to um, raise my volume. So translations of still, the word still in Hebrew is a silent, peaceful, tranquil, dummy, speechless, and as a noun, it's silence, hush, quiet, and muteness. Now in English, what the word still means as an adjective, not moving or making a sound, in brackets, like, example, the still body of a man. The still body of a man. Okay, that's, that's a word, but this is not the still I am talking about today. So, as a noun, the word still means deep silence and calm. Example, the still of the night. Okay, that's nice. And here, another meaning of steel, the word steel is an ordinary static a photograph. In other words, uh, back in secondary school, uh, when I was doing fine arts, uh, our teacher, or our fine arts teacher would always say, do a steel life drawing. It means a non-movable, um, non-living thing, or, you know, something that is quite static. Uh, it's not moving so it's not that type of steel we are talking today you see why some it's okay it's good to um, do a lot of research in Bible study we are now seeing the word steel but in different it is used in different ways okay so and um, as adverb it says um, up to and including the present or the time mentioned. This is relevant to what we are discussing today. Example, I am still in the Lord. You remember as an adverb, it up to and including the present or the time mentioned. So I'll, this is trying to tell us that, you know, the time and present uh, time of something. So the question is, are you still in the Lord? Yes, I am still in the Lord. Remember, we are looking at be still and know that I am God. So at this level, it's a, it's a question to us where, where is your location? Because when we hear be still, still with uh, the first as a noun says deep silence and calm. So where is the location of this deep silence and calmness? Where? The, the second uh, meaning that we're taking says, in the Lord. It's, it shows the position. Oh God, I don't know if you're understanding this. It shows the position of where we are at a particular time, or rather at every time in our lives. So that position should be always in the Lord. I am still in the Lord. That's an example for the word still as an adverb. So, and then and, and, uh, um, there are several other, you know, ways that the word can be used. But we're looking at uh, being still. So, it's, it's, a, it's the point where, you know, in this era of coronavirus, a lot of people are going haywire. A lot of things are going haywire. You know, there's ups and downs. In fact, the world has never stood still like it's doing. I don't even think it was this still in the dark ages. I don't even think it was this still in World War. At least we could understand it's World War, but this is this is just a virus and it's dealing with the entire world like this. So the world has come to a stand 
still <laughs> okay so but what is our position in the stillness of the world in what is happening right now the lord is saying be still and know that i am god what is our what is our spiritual position like where have we positioned our heart our mind and everything about us where at, what is the location and position of you know our hearts and our mind it should be in the lord it should be in the lord because a lot of the truth is that a lot of things happen to people people are going through different things i don't know if you're going through a very difficult time but i know some people go check out the news a lot of people are passing through a lot every day in life even before inside and after coronavirus people are suffering people have suffered to the point some people have suffered to the point where they keep asking the question god where are you <laughs> now don't make the mistake of asking god that question where are you because <laughs> he is where he is he is where he is yes and if you ask me where he is oh well he is he is wherever he is in the third heavens on his in fact yes his position is on the throne you want to find out where the throne is please run for your life and make sure that you enter eternal life with christ you will see god that is what he told us you will see god so while all these things are happening what is our position our position should be still in the lord now it is only the Lord, it is only the Holy Spirit that can give our hearts the calmness that we need to go through sufferings like this, to go through trying times like this. I told you today's Bible study is all about encouragement. The Lord is trying to encourage us with his word. Because if you read Psalm 46 uh, from verse 1 and then get to verse 10, um, 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 David is talking about it's all praises and is all trust he's saying god is our refuge and strength a very present help in trouble and some translation says in time of need the next time you lack something in your house the next time you're you're you know going through some difficult challenges do not forget this word from the lord be still in deep calmness and know that he is the Lord he is able the Bible says he is able to do exceedingly abundantly above and beyond all that we could ask of according to the power that worketh in us in you now what's the power that is at work in you I cannot overemphasize the importance of us staying under the hearing of faith staying under the tutorship of the Holy Spirit we can see calmness is not what just comes to us <laughs> it takes a hard time of practice it takes a hard time of being in the university as a student of the holy spirit it's not see when when the holy spirit is dealing with you is not someone that will define for you the meaning of calmness now the calm when you can imagine jesus when he he was sleeping while the his apostles and the boat almost sank but he was busy sleeping and when he woke up all he could say was oh ye men of little faith oh ye men of little faith he was sleeping now how many of us can sleep when we are facing some trials and tribulations and temptations and challenges of life how many of us the truth is we are human beings and there is none of this that we can do by our power. Nada. We can't. It's by the Spirit, says the Lord. He is our refuge, our fortress and our strength. Our present help in time of need. Now, um, let's get to the other part, which is the no. I don't know if I made this being still very clear. We have heard the word be still, but it's also good to ask the Lord. Lord, how? How am I going to be still? How will my heart be still in trusting you, 
in times of in, in times of difficulties lord how how is it possible that i can maintain calmness in my inner man in my inner spirit even when there is chaos around me and then this is where we get to the the second part of which is um and no be still and no and now is the knowing part there is something that we need to know before our hearts can you know attain that level of calmness that rest in god that see it's not easy trust me but with the lord all things are possible all things are possible today that believe in the lord we there is something we need to know see our my people the bible says my people perish for lack of knowledge um where's that bible verse my people perish for lack of knowledge um I think it's it's in proverbs somewhere my people perish for lack of knowledge <laughs> why is it that the bible will say if you don't know you will perish make no mistakes about that it's not my own word if you don't know you will perish meaning that every see a man everything that we know in this life or our life is generally summed up as a product of what we see and what we hear these are the, the the ways um the the ways that um um that's why the bible says the ways or the channels which man gets to um interact and can you know do a lot of things is or rather yeah receive information information is by what we see what we hear yeah we also have the other sense organs of taste and uh, f touch a feeling but I'm talking we're, we're talking scriptures here that's why the Bible said faith cometh by what's hearing it's not by feeling someone cannot come and someone can touch you and you will be uh, and you can feel the miraculous side of God and you get healed but when it gets to faith <laughs> it's hearing and make no mistake about it faith is the hallmark of, of what the kingdom of God is all about because in Hebrews I think 6 is it verse 11 it says, without faith, it is impossible, impossible, zip, z, zero. It is impossible to please the Lord. That's how important faith is unto us. And we need to get faith by hearing, hearing by the word of the Lord. So we need to know the word of the Lord. And we there's no enough word of the Lord until the day we close our eyes in death. Now, what is that thing that we need to know? Um, let's see the meaning of knowing first. Knowing is being aware, as a verb in English word, being aware of uh, through observation, inquiry, or information. Example, uh, most people know that Cornell Sanders started KFC at the age of 65. Have you met Colonel Sanders? No. Do you even know his hometown? No. I don't know. How did we know about KFC, you and I? We read it on History Channel, or we saw it on History Channel, or we read it in Google, and we searched it out. We don't know Colonel Sanders one-on-one. -on -one. So that's the first type of knowing as a verb. Now, let's look at knowing the second um, aspect of knowing it says um, this type of knowing means that one has developed a relationship with someone through meeting and spending time with them being familiar or friendly with them you see the first one is based on just information this time around you experience the information yourself it's a one-on-one -on -one relationship if you spend it says here um by meeting one spending time to being familiar three and friendly this is that the second meaning of the word no now we our hearts cannot attain 
the level of stillness we want to have when we are facing difficulties. If we do not meet the Lord, spend time with the Holy Spirit, be his friend, he becomes our best friend, and we get familiar with the voice of the Lord. The Bible says, my sheep hear my voice. They hearken to my voice. <laughs> and they know the voice of the master. If you are not his sheep of his pastures, we cannot know his voice when he's speaking. In other words, something is going haywire and the Lord is saying, keep calm, just take right. And we're shouting, hey, I am dead though. My God, help me. Oh. We are not calm about it. Why? Because we don't know him. We have not come to that level of knowing him where we have intimacy with him. I cannot overemphasize again the importance of spending time with the Lord through the word of God. See, this word of God is so important. It is so important that he came down to become flesh and die to remove the barrier be between us and God and reconcile us back to God. That's how important the word of God is. And so if we don't get to know the Lord, see, we need to, we need to know him, know him by his word. We have talked about worship in our previous um, Bible study last Tuesday. It's, it's, it's our service out of gratitude. We adore him. We reverence him. We worship him. We study him to know his character, his likes, his dislikes, what he's saying to us. When we were little, we used to go um, for ACM, Anglican Children's Ministry. There's this song, God has something to say to you. Listen, listen, pay attention for God has something to say. He's always saying. He is always saying. He has been saying before the foundation of the world, be still and know that I am God. But if you don't know his voice, because we are not his sheep, we, can, we, we might not hear this alarm that keeps sounding. There are so many alarms in the word of God. There are so many things that the Lord is saying to us in his word. But we need to get closer to the Holy Spirit so that he can sanctify our hearts with his word, refine our hearts with his fire, and quicken our inner man, our mortal but a being, so that our, our spiritual ears and eyes can be opened. You know, when, Christ, when Jesus shone his light on uh, brother Paul on his way to Damascus to persecute Christians, he said, who are you? See, Paul knew he was Lord. <laughs> when the Lord shines his light upon you, a man will not even tell you. He said, who are you, Lord? He said, I am Jesus. He wanted Paul to know that he is Jesus. See, the Jesus, when he was ascending, he said, the Jesus that is ascending today will descend in the same manner, like in, in like manner. So he's not dead though, he's alive. Make no mistake about that. He is alive. And he said, it is Jesus, the one whom you would persecute. And, and um, when um, Paul and his people he was traveling with went to a house, the Lord told Ananias in a vision. And when Ananias came and spoke to Paul and prayed upon him and laid hand, a scale did what? Fell off from Paul's eyes. And brother Paul, who, who was formerly Saul, his life never remained the same again until he died and joined the generals in, in wherever they are. So, when the Lord shines his light upon us through his word, when you, we, we get in, in that constant relationship, spending time with him, he will continue to shine the light of the word of God. And that is how scales will continue to fall off from our eyes, from our, our mind. You know, you know what? Have you ever asked yourself, why, is it, why, why, why did God call himself Lion of the tribe of Judah? Why is it that lion is lion is not the, is um, okay? It might be said to be the strongest, but it's not the biggest. Not even like other animals can't attack lion. But there's this calmness that lion has. It doesn't see a lion will just see a serpent. It will be looking at it and be wagging its tail. He's not bothered. That's why God is called Agune Temba. He is the lion. He is the lion of the tribe of Judah. That calmness in a lion 
Even in the midst of danger, the lion is calm. He's just looking at all of you. Oh, and when you're after doing, just leave, leave his presence. That's the attitude of a lion. Why? Because of the boldness he has in himself. He knows. In our own case, we know that he that keepeth Israel does not sleep nor slumber. He watches over us. Psalm 46 and 91 is filled with his promises. This our God has given us great promises that is supposed to ensure us that if we search the scriptures and know, is enough to keep our hearts calm in the midst of any type of chaos. That is not to say that sometimes you don't feel like crying. But even when we, after crying, he comforts and consoles us. Then there's no, in such way, nothing like suicide will come into your mind. Nothing like, ah, let me get a steal will come into your mind. Nothing like, let me get a fornicate to get some money will come into your mind. Nothing like, let me go and do so many evil thoughts are not coming to your mind because you have the comforter. Jesus said he will send us the comforter. You will cry, yes, because you're a human. And we can, I, I'm, I can't stand here and tell you that there are not things that happen to us that we don't feel. There are things that happen to us that we feel. But the Holy Spirit is ever there. And as long as we're in relationship with him, he will continue to comfort us and will continue to make a way for us where there seems to be no way. So this is the second part of it. We cannot be still if we don't know. Now, if we don't even know why we should be still, we can't. Trust me. We, we should know why we should be still. So... The third part of our Bible study today is I am. I hope you got the connection between this, the first part, being still, and the second part, knowing um, um, the strategies and, you know, the things that will help our hearts to be still in God. And then the, the third part is I am God is God, why should we be, st why should we be still in you? As in, what is it about you that should make us to be still? What? And so, um, you know, um, the Bible, as I was searching, I got to realize that we're looking at the word I am there. He appeared to Moses and he said, he asked him and he says, I, oh, uh, rather, he asked him who he is going to tell the Israelites that sent him and he said, tell them it is I am that I am. See, Richard Branson has, uh, is it over 300 companies or 400? And uh, maybe you run 10 businesses, but guess what? God is the only I am, and you cannot, God is the only I am that is, is yesterday, today, and forever. Because someone can say, what are you? You say, I am the CEO of, but with time, all the I am's in this world become past tense. So it means when I die at old age, at good old age if i used to run 700 companies or, or 20,000 companies they would say she was the ceo of 20,000 companies <laughs> yes every other i am i am eventually becomes past tense but god is the ultimate i am that i am that is his name he 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 told us it is his name why because his own I am is authentic. Okay? It's, it's, it, he is I am yesterday. He is I am that I am today. He is I am that I am forever. That thing he said he is, that is what he will continue to be world without end. Amen. That's a reason for us to trust him. So uh, the word I am relating to God, the one relating to God, it appears over 300 times in the Bible. It started from Genesis 50. It started from Genesis uh, Genesis 15, verse one, and uh, it, the last one is in Revelation 22, uh, verse 16. Now let's see Genesis. Um, I think I put it somewhere in my Bible here, so so that it fast it is fast for us. Genesis Genesis uh, 15, verse one, and it says, "I'm reading my small <laughs> Bible." Okay, it says. After this, the word of the Lord came to Abram in vision. He he was Abram then, not Abraham. And it says, Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield. 
I am your very great reward. Abraham's blessings are mine. Abraham's blessings are mine. I am blessed in the morning. I am blessed in the evening. Abraham blessings are mine. You and I, we were in Abraham when the Lord was telling him, I am your shield. Do you know that? You and I, we were in Abraham. So um, I'm, go I'm going to try to rush this because um, I hope to end at a good time. You know, Lord, I trust you. You who just put all these things in the mouth of a man. I, I, I was even asking myself, oh Lord, how do I, how do I get to explain this? But I see that the Lord is helping me. Father, I am grateful. So, and he's saying, I am your shield and your great reward. We, you and I, we were in Abraham when he promised us this. We have to rely on the I am personality of God. I Because he doesn't change. And he is steadfast and he is a keeper of his word. In fact, he, he said instead of his word not to come to pass, heaven and earth will pass away. That's how authentic the word of the Lord is. And he has given us the word that he is our shield and our great reward while we were still in the loins of Abraham. Now, quickly, let's. I, I want to tell you why he is God and why we should be still when he tells us to be still. Let's look at the seven I am's. I posted something about this um, in the group, the seven I am's. Please scroll up. I will post it again um, after the Bible study. The first I am says, Jesus said, I am the true vine. This um, is in John 15 from verse 1 to 5. First of all, let's look at the representatives of what the Lord says he is. Some of it, remember, it appeared over th like 300 times. I and The word I am as it appears to God. But we're looking at the seven I am's right now. And um, what it represents, you know, all the he is, he is. What does he actually represent? When the Lord says, I am the true vine in John 15, 1 to 5, vine represents blessings, strength, progress, and survival. You see, he is saying, I am your strength. I am your blessing, I am your progress, and I am your survival. I want you to relate this to you. Take it personal. When you take God personal, he takes you personal. When you're involved in his business, automatically he involves himself in his business. Do you understand that? Selfishness has no purpose in the kingdom of God. No. We are all called to serve the master. So as long as we want to do what for ourselves, what we want for ourselves first, uh -uh, we are missing God. But if we put him first, oh yeah, then he, he's also going to be our shield and our reward and be our true vine. So the next time you're reading this, understand that he is saying he is your blessings. Now, if God is saying he's your blessings, why would you want to worry? Tell me. The second I am, he says, I am the bread of life. And this is in John chapter 6 from verse 35 to 48. And he, uh, bread here means eternal life. It represents eternal life and the body of Christ. That was why he did it in the Last Supper. He broke the bread and said, take this, it represents my body. Right? And when the, the devil tempted the Lord, uh, telling him turn the stone to bread. He said, man shall not live by bread alone, by that, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord. Now, it, it, it's, it's more like saying that it's, it's not about the physical bread. It's about the spiritual bread, which is the body of Christ. And um, the third I am says, I am the light of the world. John chapter 8, verse 12. See, Brother John is God... Uh, See, Brother John is, some, is somebody else. And also in chapter 9, verse 5. Uh, now, what does light here mean? Light means purity, goodness, clarity, insight, knowledge. 
where there is uh, light comes and darkness comprehended it not. When light comes, we see clear. Everything is pure. It's transparent. You know, we see, we see, uh, it's here, clarity inside. We have a deep insight. We have revelation. Why, why, why would we want to stay in the darkness of worry and in the darkness of weeping and sorrows and agony when the Lord is saying he is our light? Trust him and he will shine his light upon you. Shekinah, as simple as that though. As simple as that. And um, the next one says, I am the gate. John chapter 10 verse 7. He is the gate. He is the entrance. And no man cometh unto the Father except through what? Through him. Jesus. He is the gate. Now, gate is a point of entry. It's as simple as that. He is the gate to our salvation. He is the gate to our joy. He is the gate to our peace. He is the gate to everything. He is the gate to our blessings. He is the gate to our protection. He is the everything. Why, 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 why will some people be looking for other ways when God is, is the gate. He's telling you, come unto me, all ye that are heavy, loaded, and laden, and I will give you what? Rest. But man said, no. Lord, I can do it with my brain. I see some people saying um, it's about the brain and all some of those scientific teachings. Yeah, they are good. But we have to understand that when it comes to God, we remove all our senses and trust him. He's, he's doing nada with our senses. Just trust him, yield unto him, and he, he automatically activates everything. So, um, the fifth I am is, I am the good shepherd. And it's in John chapter 10, verse 11 to 14. Who is a shepherd? Who is a shepherd, pardon me? A shepherd is someone who takes care of his sheep. He, he leads the sheep to safety. He takes, he, he's in charge of the welfare of the flock. He keeps watchful eye on his sheep. Now, after this Bible study, please go ahead and read Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. Are you seeing what he, he, he is doing for us? He leads us in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. That even though we walk through the valley of shadow of death, we shall what? Fear no evil. For thou art with us. He is our rod and our staff. He comforts us. He prepares a table before us in the presence of our enemies. Anointed our heads with oil that our cup will overflow. Surely his goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days, not some days of your life. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. This is what the shepherd is doing for us. I don't know what else to tell you and I don't want to go into details. But let me end it here. Because of time. Second, uh, sixth, um, I am says, I am the resurrection and uh, the life. Well, you know what life is. Eternal life. The Bible says, do not fear those that can take our 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 first physical life but fear him who is able to kill your life now and kill it in eternity and he is god he has the keys to eternal life he's the resurrection and the life john eleven twenty five. 25 he holds the highest power and the highest joy afterwards and the seventh i am is i am the way the truth and the life john 14 verse 6 He's telling you he's the way to eternal life. He is the truth that we need to know. He, he, and he is, in fact, he's the life. He has summed it up. I have a teaching on, on, I, I, I previously did a diagram. Jesus, way, truth, and life. But I think I will be taking it to another class so that all this can enter into one video. Uh, yes, into one video maybe some other time we'll look deeply at you know how jesus is the way the truth and the life so what are we saying in this bible study with all these with all the seven i am's and with the one he said in to abraham to us and you see don't think that the lord is saying it to abraham or abraham 
What he says to Abraham, he is saying to you, he's saying to me. What he says to every believer, he is saying, the word is for us. The word is for you and I from generation to generation. It hasn't changed, but it, it continue, it's for you and I, and it continues to transform lives in Christ Jesus. So tell me, knowing who God is, you see, why should our hearts not be still? So if I have only five naira, and then I'm saying, Jesus, I do not have another money. What do I do? My baby needs to feed. What do I do? <laughs> and then you remember the, 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 the woman that gave her all. And Jesus said she gave the best. <laughs> and then you remember the story of Elijah. And is it the Shunammite woman? That um, where she gave Elijah her last meal. And the meal kept on overflowing. And then you remember the miracle of Jesus feeding the 5,000. With, uh, with loaves and fishes you see you'd be like oh god if you did it in those days you would do it for me all i need to do is go about my normal usual business and i know i know that you have a father you would help me and <laughs> you will you will cause any raven anywhere to to bring manna to me while i'm in the brook you know like in the story of elijah Brethren, our Lord is able. He is big. He is mighty. He is wonderful. He is excellent. Awesome. I am that I am is his name. See, the next time you call him that, I hope that this Bible study will help us understand who he is. Shake not. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. He will direct your path. Brethren, this is not a joke. He will do it. He's been doing it for ages. <clears throat> Excuse me. And he will not fail to do it this time. Let's get to end our Bible study here. Um, I, have a lo I have a lot of things that I've written down in my notes. But I just feel like because this is video, um, I need to make it quite shorter so that people can listen to it <laughs> you know but that you're trusting the lord doesn't mean you don't also use your brain you have to be <clears throat> pardon me pay attention to what is happening in 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 the world where we are you know like people um the technologies um psychology that is involved and all of that um, i'm not getting into that but i want to say thank you so much for staying tuned i am blessed because you're here and we are blessed because the Lord is our umbrella. In this period of coronavirus and in any other difficult situations that you're facing, I want your heart to be still and know that he is God. He is there for you always and he will not let your foot strike the rock. He will not let you fall. Our help cometh from the Lord. And he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High, shall abide under the shadows of the Almighty. And we will say of the Lord, He is our refuge and our fortress. There are so many promises of God that cover you and I. Let us in every situation know that our hearts should be calm and acknowledge that He is God. Thank you so much for this Bible study. Stay in tuned. Please do join us next Tuesday invite your friends don't forget to keep the comments the contribution the advice the the resonations and all of that don't forget to keep it coming in the comment section i will be waiting for you in the comments section thank you so much stay blessed and let's pray heavenly father wonderful is your name mighty is your name thank you Lord, for teaching us that you are able to take care of us that you stand by your word and you keep your word that you are steadfast Lord, we pray, O oh Lord, I pray for my sister, my brother, that facing different difficulties and challenges, thinking they are in hopeless situation. Lord, I pray that you calm their spirits with your word. Lord, let your water flow in their hearts. Let it calm every nerve. Lord. Send them help, O oh God. As many that need help, send them help. Provide their needs for us. Provide our needs for us. Thank you, Jesus, for being our present help in time of our need. Be thou exalted. In Jesus' name we pray. 
Amen. See you some other time. God bless you. Love you loads. <laughs>